This is the first of a two part video where I'm going to be breaking down exactly what you need to do to configure your side mount harness. The system I'm going to be configuring is the X Deep Stealth Classic, which is on the left hand side. The Rec and the Tech system I will do in a separate video, as well as the Razor system and adding a loop bungee. I'll also configure the Apex side mount system and what changes I would make and suggest to this, again in a separate video. You can apply everything I show you in this video to every side mount harness on the market, ensuring you get the most from whatever system you choose to use. I've partly set up the harness uh, all one side with the correct back length already. I'm going to break things down and show you exactly um, how you would go about fitting this. So first thing is that you want to make sure that the back length is correct and the person when they reach back they should just be able to reach the top of the weight pocket. Uh, I would say that's a good. So we're going to break this down. Now you see I've added a tri-glide that has a piece of bungee through it for the loop bungee and there's another alternate piece here which has a loop already fixed into it. I'm going to go through now how to adjust the lumbar section. So this is actually adjusting the back length. Now, it's a good idea once you have it set up to actually mark the harness uh, so that you can put it back this way. It might be that you need to make it things a little bit bigger between a wetsuit and a dry suit. And that's why it's a good idea to have maybe two different sets of markings. A lot of people do wear it waist mounted, which is higher than the hip version I've got here. And if you ask me, that's a mistake, simply because if it is hip mounted, you're actually going to get a much better torsion from top to bottom, um, given you're going to correctly configure your cylinder hardware to work with the harness. Now, I actually found this out when I was in Japan, and I, in the space of three days, took 22 Japanese instructors who had never tried side mount before. These divers had all different sizes of height, um, body sizes, and what we found is that I didn't adjust the harnesses. Really, I just sort of put them on to three different people at a time. The cylinder rigging was exactly the same with the band at 45 centimeters down, and I was able easily with sliding D-rings to have every single person trimmed properly underwater in side mount and this actually worked really well for the side mount experience session that i ran which was basically just a 40 minute dive as vast pulls you see it's directly straight under the armpit at the bottom of the armpit and the tri-glide is just catching that there on that strap now do you really need a butt plate I personally have never found a reason I would need one. Um, I can only think if you're using high pressure steel cylinders, then you would use these door handles to clip the cylinders to the side and the cylinders would then kind of hang at the side, um, which if you watch my video on hanging the cylinders at the side, it's not a particularly good idea. What I use is the hip mounted sliding D rings to clip my cylinders to instead. So. Now the reason people add weight at the top of the harness is usually because the wing lifts too much there or that more likely they've got fins that are way too heavy for them and they're trying to trim their self out. Now we're going to take a look at adding weight into the central weight pocket and good idea just to put the velcro up like this. I generally start adding weight lower down because I think that is directly where the wing lifts from and where the cylinders become light from. 